great to see you all. We've got an English lesson yeah. today. So before we get into the main part of our lesson, we do two jobs. We do a little bit of handwriting and then we do a little bit of punctuation and grammar as well. So we are still focusing on our curly caterpillar letters and today's letter is, let's get a drum roll going, <laughs> D. So it's our D. So again, it's a curly letter, we curl into it, okay? So let's watch this video, get your magic pens ready or magic fingers and let's join in. E in, go round, go back, go up to the top, down and flip. E in, go round, go back, up, right to, up the to the top, top, down and flip. E in, well go done round, everybody at home. Go back, up to the top, down and, and flip. flip e in, in, go round, go back, letter. go up to the top, That's down. It. And flip, lead in, well go round, go back, up to the top, down, and flip, lead in, go round, go back, up to the top, down, and flip. Perfect, well done everybody. Superstars. So, now we've practised in the air, we should be ready to have a go on our lines. So you might do that on some lined paper like this if you've got it, or just a normal line in your book is absolutely, absolutely fine. fine. So, when we are looking at this letter, it starts on the grass, doesn't it? Like every letter, and we whoosh in, but this time, it's going all the way up into the sky. So if you're writing in your books, that means that it goes right up to that top, top line, okay? Not the curly part of it, just the stick, okay? So let's keep our curly part in the grass and then the stick up to the sky, okay? So let's have a go first. So we whoosh in, go round, back round, up into the sky, down and flip. Let's have another few goes. So whoosh in, round, back round, up into the sky, down and flip. And let's do one more. Whoosh in, round, back round, into the sky, down and flip. Lovely. So actually it's like our A's and yeah. our C's because they stay in the green, but because our D has got that tall bit, the curly bit, like with the A and the C, still stays on the grass, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But then our tall stick goes up into the sky. Okay. Fantastic. And we need to make sure that we're keeping them all the same size. I don't want some really big ones and really small ones. We want them all to be consistent. Brilliant. Okay. Well done. So have a go at that now for us, guys. Okay, fantastic handwriting everybody. That was absolutely spot on. Perfect. Beautiful. So let's have a look now at some punctuation. And all that means is what we use at the ends of sentences, okay, to punctuate, to tell us what to do, how to say it. So we need to add either a question mark or an exclamation mark to this Sentence. And we've done that, haven't we? We've done question marks we have. and we've done exclamation marks so they know what both of those things are. Absolutely. So let's find out then, let's read it. What are you playing? Do you think they could write it on their whiteboard? Yes, write it on your whiteboards for us. Either a question mark or an exclamation mark. Which one is mark. it? Should we do what a countdown? Yes, let's do a okay. countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Hold them up. Let's see. Oh, Ooh, lots of us have got it right. Very good. Okay, lots of them have done a question Thanks mark. Well, yeah. Let's try it then. So I'll pop the question mark at the end. So let's read it. What are you playing? I'm playing dominoes. I can answer it, yes. can't I? So that means that it's a question. Yes, absolutely. I can see why some of you might have put an exclamation mark there because it's it got... starts with the word what yes. and our exclamation sentences start with the word what. So it was quite a tricky one actually. It sometimes does catch us out. Yeah, it does. Well done guys. Yeah. Right then, what are we going to learn today? Our learning question is, how can I identify the features of a postcard and then plan my own? Ooh. So assessment criteria number one, 
to explore and identify the features of a postcard. Number two, to write an address, because this is quite tricky actually. It can be. And number three, we're going to generate, that means think of our own, time adverbs and interesting adjectives, those describing words to describe landmarks. Now you're all going to do this really they are. easily. I know. I you can are. tell. Fantastic. They've got their brains switched on. They today. definitely have. So, I've got some pictures here on the board. I want you to have a little think now. What is a postcard? Mm. You might have received one before. You yes. might have written one before. Yes. What is a postcard? Have some thinking time now. Okay. What is a postcard? Oh, someone said it's a little bit like a letter. Yes. It is a bit like is. a letter. But with a letter, we don't actually have a picture as well, do we? No. So a postcard's got two sides, hasn't it? It has. It's got one side that's got a picture on. And normally it's a picture of somewhere that you are staying, somewhere that you've been to, yes. like on a holiday or a day trip. Yeah. Then on the other side, it's got the address, yes. who it's been posted to. And then it usually has a few sentences that tells the person. All about it. Yeah, what they've been up to on their holiday or on their day trip. Yes. Okay, you're absolutely right. Lots well of you done, that guys. already. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so let's have a closer look at a postcard. So you can see here, it's got a picture on this side, hasn't it? So on this side, look, you can see that they're at the beach. Mm -hmm. So that's the place that they've been to yes. on their holiday. Then on this side, it's got a few lines here. Sentences. Yeah, which explains all about what they've been up to on holiday. Yeah. This side's got the address, and then there's a stamp. Yeah. Because if you don't put a stamp on it, it won't arrive. It won't get to the destination. It won't, will it? Okay. Oh, yes, yes. So we've got a, picture. a picture on the front showing where you are on holiday. Fabulous. Ooh. Okay, let's have a good look. I'm going to read the postcard to you. So, dear Tom, we are having lots of fun on holiday. Yesterday, we went to the beach. I made a huge sandcastle and ate lots of ice cream. Today, we went to a theme park. We went on lots of scary rides, but it was lots of fun. Tomorrow, we are going to go on a boat trip. I hope we see dolphins from Anna. So, I want you to have a good look at this postcard now. What things can you see? Spot that are a little bit different to other types of writing. We've done things um, like story writing before, and we've done things like non chronological reports mm -hmm. before. What are the features of this postcard? What can you spot that's a little bit different? Okay, then let's hear some of those ideas. What features can you spot? Oh, somebody said it says dear. It does. it does say dear. It's a greeting, isn't it? So yes. You could say dear, you could say to, you could just say hi. So yes. you might say hi, Miss Clayton, if you're writing to someone who's maybe a friend. It's a bit more informal, isn't it? Or maybe it? if you were in a foreign country, you could write, like if you were in oh, Spain, yes. you could write hola. Yes, or like ciao or yeah. something like that. Yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. depending on where you are. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else can we spot? Oh, someone says it says who it's from it does doesn't it yeah. Here, look. it signs off so it might say from might say love from yes. sometimes people just write their name we need to know who the postcard is from yeah we know it's to tom but how will tom know who it's from yes okay you've got to write your name okay, okay. hmm i'm just looking i'm going to read it again actually okay. because there's something in the actual just sentences. to refresh our yeah. memory so dear tom we are having lots of fun on holiday yesterday we went to the beach I made a huge sandcastle and ate lots of ice cream. Today, we went to a theme park. We went on lots of scary rides, but it was lots of fun. Tomorrow, we are going to go on a boat trip. I hope to see some dolphins. So it's in the first person of what that means. Yeah. They're using the word I and they're using the word we. Mm -hmm. Because we're not going to say, if I was writing to Miss Clayton, I wouldn't say, Dear Miss Clayton, Miss Edith is going to see some dolphins today. Because no. that sounds funny, doesn't it? I would say I. Yes. So that's all it means. It means that you're going to talk about yourself. You would say I, or you might say we. You've got a brother or sister yes. or someone in your family. So you're talking about yourself. Yes. Okay. So it's the first person, I and we. Brilliant. Ooh, okay. Should we move across to the other side now? Yes, our focus? Absolutely. What can we see over this side, guys? 
right in that top corner. What is it called? That's it, a stamp. Yes, it's a stamp, it? isn't it? What what's a stamp for, guys? What what is it used for? Oh, I can hear some of them are saying it helps the postman delivery. Yeah, absolutely. It's how you pay for them to do it, actually, isn't it? Yes. You pay for your stamp and then it will get to its destination, hopefully, then. Fabulous, so there is. Oh, I think it's the next one. There we go. There it is. So this one's Ooh. just saying there's a space to write about your holiday. So yeah. all this bit yeah. here is where you're writing about your holiday because on the other side, there's something different, isn't yes. there? Okay, so on this know. side, what can you see next? Shall I read it? It says, Tom Hill, 123 High Street, Clifftop Town, HG134 TW. Oh. It's an... It's an address. It's an address. It's the address for Tom because the postcard is going to Tom, but the postman won't know where to deliver it yes. if he hasn't got the address for Tom. That's where he lives. Yeah, we've all got addresses, haven't we? Yeah. Absolutely, because we all live on different streets, different roads, and you have to know what your road is called, yes. otherwise you won't get any mail or any um, um, letters or things delivered to your house. Yes. Okay, so that's our address. Fabulous. And they usually have some lines already on the postcard for you to do that. Okay. And then it's got the name and the address for who you're sending the postcard to. So normally it's got some lines and you write it in. Okay, we've spotted lots of features lots of there. there you wouldn't there. think there would be that much. On such a tiny little postcard. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So we're going to write our own postcard oh, to a family member, but we're going to pretend to be Katie. Oh, okay. So we're still going to say I, but we're pretending that we are Katie. So shall we turn into Katie? Yes. Ready to do a turn? <laughs> we are now Katie. <laughs> right then. First thing we need to do is we need to decide who are we writing our postcard to? So it can do, we're going to write it to a family, family member. member. So it could be mum, it yeah. could be dad. It's not going to be our brother Jack because no. we're in London with we our brother Jack. Jack. Yes. It's not going to be our grandma because we're in London with our could grandma. Could be maybe cousins. Could be granddads. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we need to decide who are we writing our postcard mm. to? Well, I reckon with Katie being in London, Without her mum or her dad, I think they would really like to hear from Absolutely. her. Absolutely, they'd love to hear, wouldn't they? So should we do it from to mum and dad? Yes, lovely. That would be quite so, nice. So, you might not know, but Katie's in lots of stories, and her last name is Morag. Morag. Do you want me to get the pen ready, Mrs. Yes. Bits? So should we do Mr. and Mrs. Morag? Yes, that sounds very professional. And we know how to, to write that as well, don't we, Mr. and Mrs., because it's our tricky words. Absolutely. So, Mr. and Mrs. Morag, because on the first line is where you write the name of who you're sending it to. Yours might be different to ours when you do yours, because maybe you're going to write to a cousin or to a friend. Okay. Mr. and Mrs. Morag. I'm making sure I'm using capital letters correctly. Yeah, because it's their names. There so there's a capital for Mr, Mrs and Morag. Hmm. Now, we don't know their address, but it's okay. We can make it up. So, let's think. They can live at number... What number? 52? 52, like 52. It. And is it going to be a street, a road, a crescent? I quite like the word avenue. Avenue, lovely. Should we do that? Well, what could it be called? What about Ivy Avenue? Oh, well, that sounds nice. Ivy Avenue. Avenue. It can be anything you like. You can be creative here. So use the capital Ivy. again. Yeah, because it's the name of the avenue or the name of the road. Ivy Avenue. And it's got ooh, ooh, we said it to the rescue. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Morag, 52 Ivy Avenue. I wonder what area they live in. Yes, yeah, so like at the moment at school we are in Cheslin Hay, mm. aren't we? Maybe we could use Cheslin Hay because Should it's we made use, up, isn't it? Should we use that? that yeah, we could use Cheslin Hay, couldn't we? We've got our ch ch cheer for chips for Cheslin Hay. Mr. and Mrs. Morag, 52 Ivy Avenue, Cheslin Hay. Brilliant. And then the very last bit is where you would put your postcode. And it's a mixture of numbers and letters, isn't it? So again, we can just kind of make it up. And because they? it's Warsaw, we know mm. that it's W. Okay. Yeah. So we could start with a W. And it's W S, S, isn't it? And then we can put a number. A number. Or should we have W S 8? Yeah. Fine. W S 8. And then we can have any mix. Three more. Ooh. We need maybe four. 
Jay. Jay K. Lovely. Lovely. And that's our address, so we know now it will reach Mr. and Mrs. Moran. Because yes. if it's not on there, we won't know how to get there. Okay, so when we do our, our writing on Friday, that's there, ready for you. You're writing it now so that when you write later on, you haven't got to think about it. It's already there, it's ready for you. So just make sure you're using your capital letters in the right places, ready for Friday, okay? Oh, fantastic. Okay, so you're all going to have one of these. It's a plan for your postcard. Now, Katie, or you, mm. are in London. So in, in, in the story, Katie saw lots of different landmarks in London, didn't she? But you're just going to choose three yes. because a postcard's only quite small. You can't write you out all of the landmarks. No. And normally in a postcard, it's a bit of a snapshot, isn't it? it? You don't tell them everything. No. You just tell them some things. So right at the very top, dear, well, who are we writing ours to? It was dear mum and dad. Yeah, mum and dad. Yeah. Okay. Shall so, I write that? Yeah, thank you, Miss Clayton. So dear mum and dad, you might have, you might even cross dear out on yours and change it to two or hi. That's absolutely fine. But we've got to greet the person we're writing I've to. I've got an ad. Sorry. Yeah, that's exactly because postcards are quite informal, yeah. aren't they? They're chatty and friendly. Okay, we need to tell mum and dad where are we? London. London. So maybe we could say, I am having a brilliant time yes. here in London. Lovely. And you can choose what you're going to write as your first sentence to tell whichever family member or friend where you are. And are you having a good time or not? I am having a brilliant time here in London. That's it. So make sure when you're writing it, you're using your finger spaces. Make sure that you're also using your sounds, your phonic sounds, to help you to spell your words. And London has got a capital. Yeah, capital letter for London. So name of a place. And what do we need at the end? Full stop. Fantastic. Dear Mum and Dad, I'm having a brilliant time here in London. Now we've got three boxes and that's going to be for three landmarks. Okay. So at home you've got some pictures and you need to cut them out so choose three that you want to stick in. Which three would you like to tell your family member about at mm. home? Right then, we've chosen three landmarks and we've stuck them onto our plan. So the first one is St Paul's Cathedral, then we've got the London Eye, and then we've got the last one, which is Tower Bridge. Yeah. You might have different ones, that's absolutely fine. Underneath each picture, there's a box, and in there you're going to put a time adverb. So for the first one, I put first. Yeah. What could we write in the next one? Oh, oh I've just given you another one, really. Yeah. You could say next, couldn't you? So when you're talking about it, you might say, first, we went to St Paul's Cathedral. Next, yes. we visited the London Eye. Or you could Arm. say after that. After that's a lovely one, isn't it? Yeah. And then you need another one for here, but that's going to be the final one that you yeah. go to. So we could use the word finally. Yeah, finally or last. Yes, okay. so we need to write those in, don't you? We have it all oh, yeah, get, get the pen back. back. <laughs> there we go. So we've got net, next, yes, and then several. finally or last. So you can choose which time adverb, which time connective you want to pop in. There we go. Okay, so that's going to help us when we're writing it. Yeah. And then the last thing that we need to do, because we're so good at adjectives yeah, now, you are. we need to use them in our writing. So yes. we need to put them on our plan so we don't forget them. Yes. Okay, so let's look at St Paul's Cathedral. How could we describe it? How could we oh, describe I've got a good it? Go on, Miss Clayton. I think St Paul's Cathedral is magnificent. It is, isn't it's it? it? It's a beautiful building, mm -hmm. yeah. So, and I've kind of, I've used, I've chosen a really nice adjective, not just a boring, No, it's a word. powerful I'm not one, using it? big, it's yeah. magnificent. <sighs> Yeah. So I'm right. I'm going to write that down so I don't forget. Absolutely. So then, when we write it, we could say, first I visited the magnificent St Paul's Cathedral. Yes. I'm describing it. Yes. And we'll be very impressed if we see these adjectives, won't we, in the you writing. Could, yeah, and you could do a couple of sentences mm -hmm. about each landmark, not just one sentence about yeah. each one. So you might say, First, we visited the magnificent St. Paul's Cathedral. It has a huge dome. Yes. So we should write huge dome huge. down just to remind us. Yeah, absolutely. We can challenge ourselves and do a couple of sentences. We can. So first, we visited some, the magnificent St. Paul's Cathedral. It has a huge dome. Okay, then let's have a look at the London Eye. Yes. Well, 
because of the shape of it, it's it's very round, round isn't it? Or, I think there's a better word, circular. <gasps> circular. So it tells one. us it's a circle. So we could put that down. Yes. Yeah, so, so next we visited the circular London Eye. Oh. And then you might say it was really what could we say? Oh yes, I know you're going to high or tall, yeah. anything like that. It's a very tall building. It is. Yes, lovely. That really helps to describe it. You can see it in your mind's eye, can't mm. you? Yeah. Last one then. Finally, we visited. Ooh, how could we describe Tower Bridge? It's a very old building. It is. It? And I think it's quite grand. grand. So we could say, maybe say, finally, we visited the Grand I like that. Tower Bridge. That's good. Because actually, in, in 1666, it was their Tower Bridge. So it's very, very old, isn't it? It's grand. Okay, okay so finally, we visited the Grand Tower Bridge. What could we say for our second Now, sentence? I think when we were reading um, Katie in London, I know that we were talking in my classroom, and you probably did it mm -hmm. here, because it's a bridge, and when the ships go past it, or the boats, yeah. it goes up, doesn't it? Goes so up I think down. it's very clever. Yes, it is. It's a very clever design. Yes, a clever design. So that's mm. clever is describing, is it? A clever design. So finally, I visited the Grand Tower Bridge. It has such a clever design. Yeah. We've got all of our ideas there, haven't we? On one piece of paper. Yes. So when we come to write our postcard on Friday, it's all there, it's, it's all ready. ready. For, we don't have to remember them. No, and we? then we know it's our best word, don't yes. we? Because we've thought of all those brilliant words. Yes. Okay. So your job today is to do your plan. Make sure you do your address first and then create your yes. plan. I know they're going to be brilliant and that means that you're going to be brilliant writing as well yes. on Friday. See you later.